Coming up in this FinCast, go diving off the coast of Kenya as native divers collect the fish for our aquariums. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and uh, we're here at the Global Pet Expo. I'm back with Mike Tushinari. I want to ask him about his world travels again because if I could be anybody besides myself, I would be Mike. He gets to go all the little corners of the world and, and see where the fish that we keep in our aquariums come from. He's been out in dugout canoes and wading in swamps and snorkeling in the Amazon River and right past snakes that could eat him and he doesn't seem to care which I would but anyway uh, he is just now back from Africa from Kenya uh, and tell me a little bit about why you decided to go out there and what you were looking for sure yeah thanks John it was quite a trip and um, you know it was short but very very valuable very interesting so most people think of Africa they're thinking you know freshwater fish there's some amazing fish there but I went out to look at the marine aquarium fishery in Kenya and to see not only what fish are out there, but you know how they're coming from those reefs out in the Indian Ocean to aquariums worldwide. You know, so it was a really interesting trip to get to see that firsthand. Traveling for Coral Magazine, Mike wanted to learn about the rare fishery in the Indian Ocean off of Kenya, where native Kenyans use what many might see as primitive equipment to make a living in the aquarium trade. Well, it was my first uh, encounter on the African continent, you know, my first footsteps there. Uh, so I was on the, the coast, the east coast of Africa on the Indian Ocean. It was fascinating, fascinating fishery. The divers know what they're doing, herding the fish into large nets where they can safely be captured in smaller, handheld nets and eventually bagged underwater for transport. Another technique is to surround a school of fish, capturing many at once. And though the fish are plentiful, many Kenyan species are rare in your local aquarium store. A lot of those, the Kenyan fish you don't see in the trade too much. Uh, they're around, but in small quantities, and really specialty uh, importers and specialty retailers are the ones you'll find them at. But there are some common things too. There's a lot of species of antheus that come out of Kenya that are fairly common, but really the unique stuff are um, some of the endemics. So you've got the, um, the blue star leopard wrasse, the bipartitis wrasse. It's a little macropharyngodon of leopard wrasse, beautiful colors, probably the most vibrant in the whole genus that comes out of there. And you see the Iridus, the uh, Radiant Wrasse, is another really beautiful Halicorus Wrasse that comes out of there. Beautiful addition to most aquariums. Some of the most popular and well-known fish that come out of there are the Flameback Angel. It's a dwarf angel with a very distinctive orange stripe on the, on the uh, dorsal surface. So that's a really beautiful fish. And then of course there's the yellow belly blue tang. So the, everybody knows the classic blue or hippo tang dory. Not a lot of people know there's a distinct population that lives in Kenya and specifically on the east coast of Africa that as adults has a completely yellow belly. Uh, very distinctive. The little ones look very similar to the classic blue tang from the Indo-Pacific, but this population is very distinct. The divers travel to the fishing spot in a boat generally called a dhow, and specifically in this case, a mashwa, designed for fishing in open waters. It's a traditional fishing boat there. It's a wooden boat with two masts, and uh, tr traditionally it's a sailing vessel, but the, you know they attach an outboard to it for, for the trips out. And yeah, we went out. I spent several days out with a dive team for one of the exporters there, and it was really incredible watching them do their work and watching them the way they collect fish. Uh, it's quite an impressive uh, thing to see. On board, the divers sit among the scuba gear and nets they use to capture their quarry. And while it may look unsophisticated to the uninitiated, these divers often have decades of experience collecting in water up to 75 feet deep. It's scuba, so um, you know the, the fishery does rely on some good scuba equipment, and um, these divers are well, well equipped with uh, decent equipment to go down there. And they're typically collecting, you know, between 25 and 75 feet, so not in shallow water. 
these are where the reefs are out there. And um, Kenya has a massive barrier reef along most of the coast. So they're just out past that. And that's where you really start to see the, the more diverse groups of fish and the denser populations of fish. For Mike, the culture, the process, and of course the fish are intriguing. Enough so that he travels around the world just to be in the spot where the fish come from. I was out there on behalf of Coral Magazine to uh, investigate the fishery. Basically, it's one of those places that fish come from that very few people even know that Kenya has a marine fishery. So for me, my, you know, most of what I do is kind of just driven by this fascination. Okay, where are the fish coming from? And I, want, I like to get as far down into that as possible, you know, the, the collector level if possible, and kind of see how it all happens. It, it's, to me, it's still fascinating, every bit as much fascinating now as it was when I first got it, you know, started doing that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience, and I think to bring some attention to this little-known fishery is kind of something you know, worth, worth doing. It's tricky, you know, and, and the fishing there is much more of a skilled task than, for example, in some parts of South America where it's kind of community-based, large numbers of people collecting fish just with scoop nets, that sort of thing. But um, in Kenya, it's a very skilled activity, and these divers train for a long time, and many of them are, are 20 or 10 or 20-year veterans in the trade. Uh, there's been collecting off and on in Kenya since the 1970s, and uh, typically the exporters will start people as snorkelers and they have, you know, they collect invertebrates and stuff in, in relatively shallow water. And if they do well at that, they have the opportunity to advance onto scuba training and collecting, which of course is much more, uh, you can make much more money doing that for sure. It's important to remember that it isn't all about the fish for our aquariums. For these divers, it's a way of life, a career that wouldn't exist without the fishery. They depend upon this job to support themselves and their families. In an area where there's not much economic development, especially on the coast, you know, because Kenya doesn't really have a big food fishery even. So there's not much activity that people can do on the coast there to make money. So this is actually not only viable, but it's a major source of income for a lot of people uh, and, and a good chance at employment for skilled work. So it was pretty cool to see that for sure. And the handling of the fish and the supply chain there is really well done, I think. Uh, the fish, they get collected on the boat and I'll document this in upcoming issues of Coral, but uh, they're collected, you know, right out there on the boat. The dive team packs them. They pack them in bags with oxygen right on the boat, and they're at an export facility in a matter of hours after collection. So there's not this long chain of, of the fish getting stressed out. They arrive in pretty good shape, and I, I think that's a really cool thing. And one of the reasons Kenya fish tend to come in really nice and healthy is the care that's taken with them along the supply chain. We talk about it here uh, on YouTube, uh, we're kind of hitting the high points, but when you get into that text article, if this is something that you think is interesting, uh, you get just really a lot more detail, wouldn't you agree? Of course, yeah. You have a lot more freedom to you know, dig into the detail and really explain what's going on and really tell the story in a few pages as opposed to just a short interview, for sure. I appreciate you watching. That's all for this one, and I'll see you in the next video.